Okay, so back with another video here. Um, today I'm just going to go into um, uh, doing some uh, perspective drawing inside of Inkscape. Um, there's, uh, you know, a lot of people are familiar with things like uh, two-point perspective drawing um, and three-point. And uh, I just want to show how it's easy to set up inside of Inkscape uh, if you want to get into a four-point uh, perspective drawing. So I've got Inkscape open here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off uh, the page border because I don't think it's that that useful. So file, document properties, and then uncheck show page border. So now we're just going to draw our, and it's important to use, uh, to think of layers as we're doing this. So uh, on my first layer I'm just going to draw where exactly my um, my vanishing points are going to be. So we have to have a couple along the horizon line and uh, it helps to make them a, a color just to make them stand out a bit. Uh, so I've got this vanishing point, I'll just draw a circle in the middle, select them both and make sure that they're lined up. Um, now if you select them both and hit control minus you get that little hole in the middle so that uh, that can be our first vanishing point. Select it, um, control D to duplicate, control shift and drag with the mouse to make sure it goes perfectly off to the side. And so in, in normal two-point perspective drawing there would be our two vanishing points and I'll also sort of put in the the horizon line there. and. Uh, give it a stroke, no fill, and there we go. So normally the, the side of a building would um, recede to one point or another, uh, but what we're going to do here is we're going to do four point perspective drawing, so that is where you also have vanishing points towards the top and the bottom, and uh, that might be useful in case um, a central figure is is um, looking up or looking down at buildings or, or objects that might recede into the distance um, vertically but uh, and not just horizontally. So we're going to have that and that and there we go. So um, in, in a basic sense every single uh, point or every single edge in our picture is going to recede to um, one of these. But what we're going to do um, to sort of uh, make it easy to create the edges of our buildings, we're going to create a new, I'm going to lock down this layer and I'm going to create a new layer above. This is going to be our guidelines. I'm going to um, create an ellipse here. And it's not perfectly even. Zoom in and get it to look as close to perfect as we can. So we'll take this. <clears throat> With this layer, I like to um, decrease its opacity um, just because it doesn't need to stand out quite as much. It's just a guideline layer that's not going to be. Um, use l later anyway. So you hold down shift and bring it in. Control D to duplicate. Hold down shift, bring it in. This is what I'm just doing here. I'm just going to keep hitting duplicate. You can see that the, um, the thickness of the stroke is increasing each time. It's easy enough to, to fix later. Uh, because this layer is locked down, so we hit Control A for all. Let me just go back to um, the stroke paint, stroke style. Um, instead of width percentage, we're going to go points and then just put it to um, whatever, one point. There we go. So we've got our guidelines for um, the edges of any buildings that we, we may do. So. Um, if we want to want to be a little bit clearer about things, we'll name each layer. So, I'll just call this my guidelines. And so, let's draw the first uh, 
first building in this image. Uh, so let's, let's pick a point and it's going to go to that vanishing point there. We go from there and we're going to go to this vanishing point. And so just keeping that line in mind, we'll go here. We're going to do the bottom of the building to that vanishing point and to that vanishing point. So I've got all the lines I need basically to make um, to make the structure. And so I'm just going to lock down that layer for the time being and create a layer that's actually my my line layer. So there we go. So I don't know, it depends from here. I mean, it doesn't matter too much, but we'll just say draw out a building this big. See my other videos, you'll know that it doesn't matter if you have all this extra around the side, it can be trimmed off pretty easily. So again, let's um, turn off the other lines. So we've got all this extra stuff here. We draw a shape across it. Select them both at the same time. And go Control minus. Trims away the excess. So again here, draw a shape across it. Select them both, Control minus. Turn our lines back on. We've got one edge of the building doesn't match up perfectly that's fine we can just alter the points there we go so we're going to do this edge this other edge of the building now draw it out to wherever Let's say here have it match that guideline in the background my mistake <laughs> Shouldn't have hit enter yet. Okay, there we go. Okay, go back. Draw the rest of the line. If we ever get stuck like this where we don't have enough room, um, we'll want to zoom out and redo it. So, do this one more time here. And this should work okay. Okay, so again, trim the excess. Select them at the same time, Control minus. There we go. So we have the, the edges of our building here. And let's shade one side. So we'll go back uh, to fill. We'll give it, um, I don't know, if we're doing grade 10 art class, let's give it a completely dark edge and um, this side of the building will be lighter. Now if you were to then add a door or windows to the the side of the building you're going to use those guidelines um, vertically and horizontally to, um, to, to create windows, to create doors. Uh, let's do one more building. We're going to put it in the background here. We're going to put it behind this building. Um, so let's let's lock down our line layer, create more guidelines. So I don't know. This building does this. There's a guideline. Guideline. Oops. <laughs> Turn off the fill, and then we'll have it go maybe to here. There we go. So we've got our guides. Once you get more comfortable with this, you won't really even need a guideline layer. You can just sort of eyeball it, see how it all matches up. Uh, lock down our guidelines, unlock our line layer, 
and now just do the rest of these here. There we go. Hit end to send it to the back. Let's give it a fill. We won't go quite as black as we did with this side uh, because the less contrast that we use, the more it's going to recede into the background. Um, so yeah, we won't go completely black, but that's going to be the darker side of the building. Now we'll do the lighter side. It goes to wherever. We don't even have to be that precise with this one because um, we're just going to knock it to the back. So with that, and now hit end, and we get the correct curve of that side. And there we go. And again, let's, uh, let's I don't know, lighten, darken, play with that a bit just so that it recedes a bit. Anyway, so you're starting to get the idea of how maybe if a figure was floating right here, then buildings might curve up into the distance or they might recede downwards as if going towards some, some lower point in the same sense that they would go um, off into the distance to the left or off into the distance to the right. So I hope that um, that was useful. Let's turn off some of these guidelines here and we can start to add in other other stuff like shadows and such. Uh, eyeball it just a little bit. For this one, <laughs> shrink it just a bit, and then drop the opacity a bit. Okay, so you can see how you could fill a scene with, with buildings created using those guidelines. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, quick tutorial here. Hope it was useful, and um, I'll be back soon with another tutorial.